Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today we have a 2013 Renault Scenic. And what do we have going on today? Turn down the music. We have engine failure hazard, check engine light on, and a spanner on. I'm going in with the little Maha. We have three fault codes. Upstream turbo pressure, P0471. I'm paying no attention to the cruise control. I'm saying that that won't work unless the engine is running right. And then we have preheating unique diagnosis connection. And give me a few minutes, we'll do a little bit of hunting down and try and find out what we're gonna do on this car today, okay? Okay, into a bit of live data here. The bit that I'm gonna be paying attention to right now is gonna be this exhaust pressure. Why am I showing three numbers? Just to show that things are moving. I'm gonna rev the car. And while I'm revving, you can see the boost pressure is changing. That's the bottom one. But you can see there's no fluctuation at all. Particle filter pressure is changing, but there's no fluctuation at all on the... We'll let you do that. One second. We're gonna do that so you can get both in shot. Keep an eye on that middle pit actually over there. No change on it, okay? I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna go after here on this or show you where it is. And actually keep the camera going. I have pulled off the plastic on the bottom of the bottom of the windscreen just to get in or get access. This is what I'm going to be going after. This three wire pressure sensor. And what I'm believing is that I'm going to see a steel pipe going from here down onto the actual exhaust manifold being blocked out for carbon. And that's what I'm going to have to first. Also, I'm going to pull off this bit of plastic and get into the glow plugs and see about the glow plugs. So test them. Whether I take them out or whether I just use ohm meter or what we'll see. Uh, we can't see or don't have a control, global control relay to hand there, easy to get so I'm just going to get in while I'm here, have a look directly because I'm going to have to get in there anyway. Okay, so that's what I'm going after far now and the global. So I'd want to do a bit of ripping. Careful. Okay, guys, right fast and right easy, we have the pressure sensor pulled off. I could go along, I could connect on the wires and verify, but we did see 1013 milli bar of pressure in there so one bar so look i'm suggesting that that's right now i'm in here with a rubber hose on it and i have a mitty vac and i'm going to create a vacuum i have done this prior get off the light so you can see that it's actually holding you know, get it all in shot if we can it's actually holding pressure in there now if i put off my pipe Sorry, that was me hitting off a bit of a something, but when I pulled it off, when did I pull it off? You can see, so he is blocked. Now they are going down and leaning onto the turbine, or sorry, the manifold, their exhaust system somewhere. They're hard enough to get in that, but for now, we'd have to get in there. I have to get it cleaned. A lot of lads would say, can you not get something down here and start trying to clear it out? Like, I've tried, and I've never, never won. So if I haven't won before, I'm not going to win on this occasion. We have to get it off and get it cleaned, and, or get a new one, okay? Okay. We have our pipe out down there. Not the easiest in the world to get in it. trick that I go is I cut them. Now I have used or tried open-ended sockets and stuff, but it was only twisting on the head. So I cut, then get a normal socket in it, size 11 it is. And once it's cut and out, well, we can get a new pipe back in there again. Um, so we can see our Mitty back is now connected to the steel pipe. And we can draw a vacuum. So it blocked somewhere in the guts. I think we hit it in the tap off the ground. And normally, it seems 
Yeah, you know, not on all, all the time, but the carbon is just that hard. That it be stuck inside it. I tried heating it before I took it out and cut it, but that didn't work. Still blocked in it. Wherever the stuff is inside it. Okay, so you don't need to see this. Normally it does. It does come back to here. If you do that. Okay? Get a new pipe. Okay guys, I've just gotten off the phone and I can't get this thing. A couple of days, time maybe but not now. So I cut it in two halves again, mark where I cut it. And the blockage that we have is on that half. Okay? So in there somewhere, I'm gonna send a little drill bit and stuff in here. Try and see, can I get this thing cleared out to get this car back on the road, okay? Okay guys, pipe, cut, one, two, three places. If we get the car back on the road, until I get a pipe for this order, <coughs> just get it out, get it moving, do a bit of driving on it, be back. As in, it's clear. That's me blowing through it. Okay, get this thing back into it. See where we go from there. That socket will put it back in now, just to a nip so it doesn't get stuck in there. Again, okay, that's it. On that pipe anyway, she's going back together. Then we'll check glow plugs right there. Okay, good, uh, it's just a fast pointer. I pulled out that EGR pipe and a little bit of a heat shield up there, but it wasn't too bad. One little bolt sitting at the very back, holding him and then he pops out. I have the pipe on the way back in, which I'm gonna to have to tighten there in a second. I'm just making sure that it's all sitting back in place right before I um, squeeze up, just to show I didn't show that already, okay? Okay, guys, we have our pressure sensor and stuff back together. At this point in time, I'm after popping off the four leads off the glow plugs. I'm just gonna be doing a resistance check on it. So on all four glow plugs, we're on to number one there now. Sorry about the lead being across. Twenty-eight ohms of resistance, I'd say that is just forever too high. Sorry, I'm trying to get onto the second one. Now I'd be happier with that. We're on, a, sorry to glare, auto range in here is 0.7 of an ohm. I'm gonna to go to number three, if I can get in there. 25 ohms of resistance, too high again. Now we're gonna to go to number four, if I can get in at that one. This is um, a little bit, I think I'm in there now. 0.7, 0.8. So we have bad, number one, bad, number two, good, number three, bad, number four, good. But I'm going to throw in a set of blue print uh, ones into it, but just to show you what our tests are and our glow plugs, okay? And then we're going to drive on and stick them into it. Okay, guys, glow plugs back in, intercooler pipes back on, pressure sensor we saw already back in. I'm going to leave the Curling off the bottom of the windscreen first and give her a bit of a drive just to see what way she's looking. Get a scan tool with us and try and see, do a couple of uh, clear faults and look at the boost pressure and turbo before the turbo and stuff, okay? Okay, vehicle up and running. We can see it in there. And fault codes. Still the same, had three. As I said, they're not at this point in time too bothered with our, whatever it was, cruise control, speed limiter, multiplex. Probably should, again, you know me and my stalled car is running and if I try and raise faults. At this point in time, with the car running, Scanty will probably go out to me, tell you that I'm doing something wrong. Switch ignition on, lovely. Some cars, aren't they? Genie, I thought this thing wouldn't start. Okay, right, the ignition's on there now. So the ignition must have went off. I don't know. Maybe I decided to clear them there while I was monkey. Okay. Uh, one debate we have in our garage is um, why couldn't they have just left it well enough alone and left a key somewhere? These yokes, as you know, actually, so it looks at the reloading errors there and we have uh, no errors. And our messages actually are gone off the dash, so I'm going to, to clear at this point in time. I'm going to go back to 
parameters. Get rid of that. I want to get rid of that. Uh, P R E S S. That'll do us. Done. Where we had, I think it's down to the very bottom. Exhaust pressure before. Okay. What had we? 1013, I believe, would it be? On the last um, sitting when we were looking at it, we can see the numbers are at this point changing. Our pressure sensor is working. No, we didn't do a big load of digging into the pressure sensor itself, but we were seeing a thousand millibars in, i.e., it was seeing atmospheric pressure, but just not seeing a change in the pressure while we were revving or snapping the throttle. Okay, so we can now see a change in pressures. Our lights are gone off. I'm actually going to do a little bit on the two glow plugs out there. I'm going, sorry, the four glow plugs. I'm going to show you a little test on them in a second, but for now I have to get a tripod or some silly thing. We'll give it a spin also and I'll let you know where we're going when I come back. Okay. okay, guys, out for a little spin. And while driving and doing my little journey, I pressed the brakes. And when I pressed the brakes, lo and behold, I got brake system fault. What I'm um, doing while scan tool in hand, I just done a code scan there now. <clears throat> Excuse me, I haven't done that so far. I've only been looking in uh, electronic diesel injection and we have no errors in there, but we do have loads of faults elsewhere. Far now, what I'm gonna do is I am going to erase, not even gonna look at this point in time. We were chasing after an engine based issue. So the man was saying there's a couple of bing bongs going on, but here's our bing and our bong is because of a, uh, our engine based issue which is done and right now our braking issue so look we're just gonna leave this thing float through its fault erasing and then i'm going to drive it again and i'll have a look fresh and just see where i'm at um in a minute or so okay okay guys have completed my bit of a run or a bit of a drive in it um have no faults but yet i still have my braking system fault up here as we can see I'm going to class that as a brain fart moment. What's a brain fart? A brain fart is when something just gets by you and you don't actually think of it. The Flumen brake fluid reservoir sure is not, not bolted on or not held on out there. So the reservoir is hanging down low up over the gearbox or around the battery because I haven't got the cowling back on and the wipers back on. So it's recognizing that it's low in fluid. Given that. Anyway, also, I've seen a battery in key low message on the dash. So I'm going to change the battery in key also okay yeah it's kind of maybe, maybe it for now oh yeah i'm going to do the test on the glow plugs and i'll show you this thing with that gone off it and uh, wipers back on it right matter reversing into the shop now to uh, get it put back together or reassemble make sure that message is going to just wouldn't say low and brake fluid but the reservoir hanging down low like that is probably giving it a low and fluid uh, message but anyway that's life guys talk to you in a second okay guys just to finish off battery has been replaced in the key the cr2 Zero, three, two. Glow plugs. <clears throat> I have numbered them. One, two, three. One, two. That was number four. Okay, right. As Dave Sterl has pointed out before, these things are 4.4 volts. Okay, so you can see that. And we're going. If you can see there, 4.4 volts. But just for, these are the old glow plugs, so I'm not concerned. But just for test par purposes, I'm just going to show that um, these things either take current or don't. That's actually working. So by touching it, I'm not putting a full draw on it and going to burn it out. They are working. You can see that one is working. Okay, there's number, there's number one. This is two here, is it? Two. Nothing. Okay. Yeah. Cut very well, sorry. Nothing, okay. Now it is. Check out Dave's channel, actually. I think he was changing glow plugs on a Volvo and he has a very good. Number three, nothing. Okay, you can see that. I'm sitting on cardboard here. My trolley there is steel, so the reason for the cardboard is, and you can see here, the little arc and glow plugs are working. So what I'm doing is verifying our ohm test, but don't send 12 volts into them permanently. As I said, they're only 4.4 volts. It's just a test process that I'm doing on old glow plugs. What are the thoughts here? 
engine management issues can drive on into ABS and loads of faults all over the place. Um, yeah, fix the basics. Fix what you know you can fix, and then from there, see where you go. Um, for now, guys, please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you in the next cartoon. Peter Kennedy, signing out. See you guys. Just bonus footage. This thing is at the 45 kilometers or so now. At this point in time, and I have no fault codes back, so look, I'm happy enough that engine management was creating most or all of my problems. Guys, talk to you soon.